Welcome to the 20% True Podcast, Season 8, Magical Mysteries, Episode 6, The Case of the Mysterious Footprints. I'm Carolyn Rahman. different calls had come in about the tiny handprints in Spruce Park. The park had a playground shaded by trees, none of which were spruce, and a small field of wild grass that got mowed on the regular. Unfortunately, the big draw of the park was a small creek in the back. It meandered behind the property lines of houses surrounding the park. There wasn't much water usually, but you had to slip down a slick, muddy slope to get to the water. Although it was technically part of the park property, they'd put up a fence several years ago to keep little kids from the playground from falling into it. But that didn't stop anyone with longer legs from climbing the fence and going down there to smoke. With the first few calls, Celine understood the handprints to be spray-painted. She imagined stencils of hands on muddy banks, and figured they would wash away soon enough. But the third call made it clear that no, they were pressed into the muddy bank like footprints, as if something, someone, had climbed out of the water. That was spooky, but also, yeah, you probably would leave handprints if you had to climb out of that creek. The handprints were small, the fingers bony. Some of the hand was spread wide, as if all the fingers and thumbs were grasping for dear life. But others, the thumb was extended unnaturally, pointing backwards, as if it were broken, as if it were alien. But it was really the smallness of the human-like hands that bothered most of the callers. Between the fourth and fifth call, the rumors started to roll in. Rumors from the houses that also butted up against the creek. Rumors of a creature that crept along the length of the creek, its eyes lighting yellow in the dark. It vanished when motion sensor lights came on, and one neighbor said they watched as the backyards lit up, one house after another, the creature coming closer, 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 until it was in the next yard and the neighbor ducked back into his home before it could attack him. There were rumors of the wet smacking of feet on roofs in the night. Rumors of pale white goblins, slick with creek slime, hauling their way out of the stream. Creepy as all get out, but certainly not true. Have you seen these? the fifth caller asked. The fifth caller was Joel Nash, who called often enough to tell Celine about dead birds and loose trash in the park that she knew his name. Patiently, she said, I haven't, but it's probably nothing. It's animal tracks or someone playing a prank and everyone's letting their imagination get away from them. His voice was serious. I've got a bad feeling. I don't think this is nothing. You should come take a look. Celine didn't like being told what to do, especially by Joel Nash, but she was also tired of everyone calling. If she could get a solid explanation, then she could tell everyone that when they called. Ultimately, it would make her life easier. She drove out to Spruce Park and walked past the playground and through the field and unlocked the padlock by the gate. Her shoes squished into the mud, sucking every time she lifted her feet. She walked carefully, her eyes on the ground. There was evidence of dozens of other footprints, the soles of shoes with various patterns, stripes and zigzags and stars, Flats and boots with a defined heel. She half suspected that the little handprints would be smushed out under all the foot traffic. But then all the human footprints stopped, shying away from a mess of tracks, out of the creek, and then back in again, coming and going again and again. She squatted down for a closer look, a shiver crawling over her skin like a thousand spiders. 
They looked very human. She followed them with her eyes to where they disappeared into the field, and then she looked up to the playground beyond, where one little boy climbed up the stairs to the slide, placing both feet on each step. Then Celine followed the handprints crawling back into the creek, where they disappeared into the slow brown water. Some sort of monster, right? Celine asked. She squatted down next to Arthur as he inspected the handprints, her eyes darting back and forth between him and her evidence. His feet sunk deeper into the mud. He should have worn less nice shoes. But he didn't really own shoes that were less nice. It was all right. He would clean them thoroughly. Celine had constructed a kind of wood frame around a selection of tracks and covered it with transparent plastic preserving the marks. A practical thinker, that Celine. I'm sorry, she said. I didn't know who else to call. No worries. I love this kind of thing. Arthur beamed at her, and her shoulders relaxed slightly before she smiled back. This could be a wild hobgoblin, or maybe a water sprite. Lois came up beside him to peer down into the frame. Arthur had a gut feeling a wild hope that this was the moment when the mystery would hook her interest. She'd blink in surprise and tilt her head. She'd squat down beside them for a closer look, and then ask a question completely out of left field that would blow the case wide open. He watched her in interest, holding back a grin. Lois looked down at the handprints, then looked away, pulled out her phone from her back pocket, and started tapping, completely uninterested. Arthur tried not to feel too disappointed. I'll need to consult my bestiaries, he said. Once I know exactly what type of creature we're dealing with, I can make a spell to keep it away and protect the park. Oh, could you? Celine asked. Of course. But I wouldn't worry too much. I can only think of a handful of creatures we'd be dealing with, and they're all a little mischievous, but not malicious. The only thing we'd have to worry about was if it was a bunyip which tend to pull children into the water. But those are very rare in this part of the world. And these handprints look a little too small. My best guess is that it's... It's a possum. Arthur cut off and twisted around to face Lois, who dispassionately held out her phone. He frowned and took it from her. Oh, wow. Yeah, the tracks certainly match the picture. You've solved the mystery! He beamed up at her. She rolled her eyes. Celine shuffled closer, and he tilted the phone for her to see. Oh my god, she said, it's a possum. An opossum, Arthur said. Oh, this is embarrassing, I'm so sorry. Nothing to be embarrassed about, with all the rumors going around. He handed Lois back her phone. So you didn't send anyone from animal control or something out here before calling a wizard? Lois asked. Sorcerer, Arthur corrected. Celine clutched her face in mortification. It didn't occur to me. Everyone kept saying it was a creepy monster. Lois hummed in annoyance. Arthur hurried to draw Celine's attention away from his companion's rudeness. If you'd like, I could set up a spell to keep out opossums. That way people will stop calling in reports. I can't very well kick a possum out of the park. Where else are they going to live? Probably under someone's deck in a backyard, Lois said. Celine took a deep breath and pushed to her feet. It was an elegant maneuver, and Arthur respected such things. What if, she said, I made a little plaque that said possum tracks and just left this display here? Excellent idea, Arthur said, popping to his feet. It's an opossum, but that could be educational. Maybe with some facts about possums, she said. She was spinning around now, looking up and down the creek bed and seeing how it could be rather than how it was. I bet we could find some other tracks, too. Birds and and squirrels? Aren't we behind a locked gate? Lois asked. Who would see it? Arthur shushed her. This sounds like a wonderful project. I 
bet it'll look fantastic when you're through. I need to make some calls. Thank you so much. Arthur waved after her. Anytime. He gave a satisfied sigh as he watched Celine walk away, her phone already to her ear as she worked her magic to beautify the area. A good outcome all around. He didn't get paid, of course, but it was a nice trip to the park. He considered this a nice break between crafting all the confidence charms he had to make at home. So many confidence charms. His heart went out to the people who'd bought them. So, Lois said, I don't believe you do any magic, ever. She headed slowly back to the gate, pulling him to follow her with a kind of social vacuum. What do you mean? I do a lot of magic. It's my job. He closed the gate behind them, setting the padlock back into place. So far, you've claimed to make a spell to prevent cupcakes from being dropped. And they weren't. And offered a spell to keep bunyips away. It would have worked. Because there aren't any bunyips. Consider this, though. If I was some sort of charlatan who made a fake spell to keep away bunyips, even though there are no bunyips, how would that have stopped the little handprints that bothered everyone so much? Hmm? I would have been found out immediately. A well-placed possum trap would have done the trick. He laughed. Good point. I like you. You're funny. Even though you do suck all the fun out of mystery solving. It's not fun to solve a mystery, she said. There was something bitter in her tone. Something that would probably take her to a dark place if she brooded on it. It is fun not having to craft a spell to expel a bunyip, though. Those things are awful. And the spell is complicated, and like an opossum, it would have just moved under someone's deck. If it's a complicated spell, does that make it a more expensive one? He flashed a grin as they stepped out onto the sidewalk in front of the park. Oh, very much so. True Podcast was written and produced by me, Carolyn Rahaman. Music by Kamiku. If you want to support the show, consider being a patron at patreon.com slash 20% true. There you can get on-air recognition and behind-the-scenes bonus episodes. Shoutouts this week to Danielle, Elizabeth, Meg, Suli, Killian, Michelle and Neil, Jim, Katie, Finnegan C, Crashy, Kean, Chris, Doug, Hank, Anne, Abby, and Yelena. Check out my website, 20percenttrue.blogspot.com. Follow the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash 20percenttrue. Or follow me on Twitter at Carrie and the Hits.